Hello everyone and welcome back. In previous lessons, we have talked about mathematical concepts and principles, and we have looked at many, many past paper questions, multiple choice included. But what we haven't done is show you how to pass your CSIC exam the next time you sit it. So in this video, we are going to discuss strategies that will ensure that you pass your CSIC math exam the next time you sit. <clears throat> Importantly, we need to understand how the mathematics exam is set up. Now, you have three papers. You have your SBA or your paper three, and that is worth 20%. You have your paper two, which consists of 10 questions divided into section one and section two. It is worth 50% of your final grade. And you have paper one, which is 60 multiple choice questions. and it is worth 30% of your exam grade. So that is the three papers, one, two, and three. Paper three is also the SBA. If you do not do the SBA, then you will do paper three, depending on the institution that you're in. But this is the physical layout of the exam. Paper one, paper two, the SBA, or paper three. <clears throat> now, as a student, you have control over half the exam. And this is very, very important. And right now I want to spend a little bit of time and talk to that student who feels that he or she does not know enough, especially because of the times that we're in that you haven't spent enough time in the classroom, you have been falling behind, you don't know half the topics, you haven't finished the syllabus, you have done the exam before and you fail it and now you're worried that this year is going to be worse because you haven't done enough. You don't know enough. Well, this plan is especially for you to help you to understand that you don't need to know everything and that with a simple plan, you can go into the exam and pass it. Now, let's talk about that plan. The first part of the plan is your SBA. Your SBA is worth 20% of your exam grade. And because of that, you shouldn't joke around with your SBA. Now, if you're not doing the SBA and you're doing paper three, then what you have to do is just more practice with mathematics because those questions on the, on the paper three can come from either section of the paper. So the SBA is the easier way out. And if you're doing the SBA, you can gain, you gain your 20% before you go into the exam. How do you do that? Make sure that you work with your teacher in a timely manner or your facilitator to make sure that any issues that you have in your SBA, that they are resolved quickly and that you get a full guidance as to how to go about doing the next section after you've completed other sections. Make sure you pay attention to the corrections that your teachers make. In my experience, I've marked many SBAs, I've given out corrections, and students just take those and re reproduce those same errors in other versions of the document. So make sure that you pay attention to the corrections, make sure you pay attention to the suggestions, and do not wait until the last minute to rush your SBA through, because that is almost guaranteed that you're going to get a low grade. Do your SBAs in a timely manner, work with a facilitator, make sure that you get an early mark on your SBA. And when you get that early mark, look for all the weak areas and fix those weak areas. Get help from your family, get help from your friends, and make sure that you get that 20%. Now, if you get that 20%, that is 20% of your actual exam. All right? So you have total control over this. So do not end up in a situation where you're getting like 12 or 13% on your SBA when you can get the full 20. This is totally within your control. You can do the work. You can do the work in a timely manner. You can work with your teacher and you can get that 20%. Now, paper one is 60 multiple choice questions and it is worth 30%. Now, there are many, many practice papers out there your textbooks, if you use Mathematics A Complete Course, for example, it has practice papers in the back. If you use Oxford Book 4, then there are practice papers in the back. There are also practice papers on the website and other places that you can get them. There are also persons who sell practice, practice papers in books. If you can afford them, go ahead and buy them. If you can borrow them and use them, go ahead. But you what you should do is practice. Now, practice papers are good. 
past papers are better. So get your hands on some past papers. Go through at least six multiple choice papers. And I've seen websites where they offer um, multiple choice papers. So make sure that you go through at least six multiple choice papers, past papers. The reason is that mul multiple choice papers are notoriously hard to set. Every exam body knows this. And so because of that, multiple choice questions tend to get repeated. So if you go through at least six multiple choice papers, past papers, then what you can guarantee is that when you go into your next exam, at least half of those questions on that paper will be questions that you have seen before. They will be repeated. Now, when you practice, make sure that you include the latter years, so 2021, 2020, etc., um, because those papers, 2019, because those papers have vectors and matrices, which, simple vectors and matrices, um, which um, are on those papers now. Um, they're not on the earlier papers, but they're on the latter papers because of the change in the syllabus. So make sure that you get some practice on those latter papers. So if you go through at least six of these, I'm telling you that you're looking at almost getting the 30% um, on, your, on your multiple choice paper. So you're 30% there from your multiple choice, but 20% there. That's 50%, which means, students, that you have control over half of your exam. This is not a joking matter. If you have control over half the exam, then the passing is almost in your hands. You're almost guaranteed to pass. If you go into the exam with this kind of mindset, do a good SBA. Get help from your teacher. Pay attention to it. Pay attention to, attention to your corrections and suggestions. Get your 20%. Practice, practice, practice on multiple choice questions and paper one. And make sure that you know them and know how to work them and know the fast ways to work or percentages and things like those. And make sure that you are able to get your 30%. Combined, you have that control over 50%, half the exam. And now we need to talk about how to get the rest of marks to bring you up to the passing grade where you, where, where, where you are guaranteed of passing the exam. For paper two, very, very, very important this, this is. You do not need to know everything. There are many students who will say, but we haven't completed the syllabus. You don't need to complete the syllabus. You don't know everything. You don't need to know everything. You need to know some things, but you don't need to know everything, and you don't need to complete the syllabus either. There are many, many schools that have never completed the syllabus at all, but their students pass the exam. How do they pass the exam? Because teachers teach to the exam and show their students how to pass the exam. And this is me showing you now how to pass the exam. So we have talked about the multiple choice paper. We have talked about the SBA. And now we come to paper two. Now remember, paper two has 10 questions. Section one and section two. Section one has seven questions. Section two has three questions. Those three questions at, at, at the section two part are the ones that drive people crazy. Vectors and matrices, circle geometry, trigonometry, functions and, 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 and graphs and stuff like those. Um, many students are afraid of topics like those. Um, you don't need to know everything. You don't need to complete the syllabus. All you need to do is concentrate on four questions on paper two. And those four questions are in section one. So if you think you're a weak student, if you think you don't know enough, if you think you have done, if you know, if, it's, if you have done this thing before and you haven't passed and you're worried and you have this fear of the exam, four questions. And every student in the Caribbean can focus on four questions. What are these four questions? Question one, question two, pattern and sequence, and statistics. Question one and two, pattern and sequence, and statistics. No, question one is that question that contains fractions and decimals and um, number theory, computation, consumer arithmetic. So buying and selling and percentages and those things. All of that is question one. Now, ideally, what you want to do is you want to get several years of past papers and you want to go through several different years of question one. So work question one across several different years of past papers. 
and make sure that you got a, you have a handle on how those Christian ones are set and you can complete those. And when you've done that, move on to question two. Question two is algebra. Factorizing, simplifying, solving equations, translating statements from algebra to worded form and, and, and worded form to algebra, etc. Um, all of those things, simultaneous equations, quadratic equations, um, subject of the formula, all of those things are in section are in question two. So you need to pay attention to your algebra because that is that, that is question two. In my experience, every student is good at statistics. Every single student. I've never met a student who has a problem with statistics. And so pay keen attention to the statistics question because it is a question that you can master and it is a question that you can do very well at. Also, in my experience, students are very, very good at problem solving with the type of questions that CXE sets. So work on that problem solving question as well. And if you do that, then looking at the percentages that are for each one, so question one is worth 4.5%, same thing for quest for the algebra question and statistics question, and the problem solving question is worth 5%. 5 so if you pay attention to these four questions on your exam paper, notice I'm in section one and I haven't even touched measurement, and many of you will be good at measurement and things like those. I haven't even touched um, transformational geometry or construction. I'm just talking about these four. Question one, computation and consumer arithmetic. Question two, algebra. Question um, sometimes five or six now, depending on where, they, where it falls, but statistics and problem solving. Now, when you combine these four questions with your SBA and your multiple choice, this is the kind of total that you're looking at. You're looking at 68.5%. This is a pass mark on your exam. If you get 68.5%, you are guaranteed of a pass. And you haven't done the other bits and pieces that you know already. So you haven't gone into section two, and you don't need to go into section two to pass. So you don't need to go fret yourself and stress yourself saying, I don't understand vectors, and I need to understand vectors and matrices. I need to understand trigonometry and bearings. Reality is you do not need to understand it if you just need to pass your exam. You don't need to know them at all. You don't need to go into section two at all. Now, of course, if you're good at math and you want to do things beyond in mathematics, such as do add math and go on to university to do courses that are math related, then you need to spend some more time working on those topics. For the vast majority of students, though, who just want to pass, this is a very simple, very effective plan for you to pass your exam. Question one, question two, statistics problem solving. Work those questions across several years of past papers and make sure that you get a strong handle on how to handle them. So if you think, for example, that you're the kind of student who says, I'm, I'm repeating it for emphasis, that I'm not good at math. I don't like math. I'm afraid of math. I don't think I'm going to pass my exam. I've, I've done this exam so many times and I've failed it so many times. Remember, what you may not be doing or what, what you may not have been doing is that you haven't been going into your exam with a plan. This is your plan for the exam. You're going to work on your SBA. You're going to practice your multiple choice papers. And when you get to question, to, 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 the, to the paper two, you're not going to worry about the fact that you don't know everything. You're going to deal with the fact that you can do question one, you can do question two, you can do the statistics question, and you can do the pattern and sequence question. And when you combine all of that, you are guaranteed, you are guaranteeing yourself of a pass at your next exam. So put in the work, plan for your exam, and if you do this, you will be successful. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. Your subscription helps us. Remember, you can find past and practice papers on the website at csitmathtwitter.com. Continue to work hard, work on this plan, and good luck in your exam the next time you sit. Thanks for watching.